So maybe it's going through your mind. Do I take a gap year? Maybe you're on a gap year right now. Maybe you're planning one. Maybe you know you need that break from education. Maybe you know that you just want some time for self growth, but you're a bit like, right, okay, how am I gonna fill my time for a year? I'm currently on a gap year in the UK and this is the video that I wish I had seen before taking my gap year. Rapid fire, 35 amazing things that you can do in a gap year. Number one, get a job in retail, in a cafe, restaurant, anything like that, and just save up some money. It might not sound super exciting, Thing, but saving up money is an amazing thing to do. I think you gain a lot of independence just through working full time. Earn that dollar. Number two, get an internship, either paid or unpaid in an industry or a sector that you are potentially interested in going into. I met an awesome guy my age who is currently on an internship at the Financial Times in London, which is mad. You can find applications online, just look up a company that you're interested in. If you're interested in film, I really recommend looking at BFI or Interfilm. Journalism, PR companies, accountancy, whatever you want to do you can gain experience in your gap year in a sector that you're interested in even do it abroad or move to london or get the company potentially to cover your travel costs it'll definitely aid your professional career number three go interrail europe i did this for a month i won um, an interrailing pass from the eu in the discover eu competition i'll leave a link to it down below buy an interrail pass get your map of europe randomly pinpoint some countries you want to go to and then bam just get the trains go backpacking live in hostels if you're good at budgeting you could easily save up about a thousand pounds and go for three or four weeks, depends on the countries you go to because they're different costs. Number four, backpack Australia. Um, I went for two months and backpacked the East Coast of Australia, had the best two months. Australia is literally made for backpackers. It's so easy, especially if you've never backpacked before. It's really easy if you want to go solo because everyone's really friendly. Hostels are great. Australia is expensive though, especially if you want to do excursions like skydiving, scuba diving. I would recommend saving at least 3,000 if you want to have like a good time and go for a while. Number five, get a working visa in Australia. This is something that I am going to do one day. I really want to get a one year working visa, go out there. It is what most backpackers in Australia do. Australia is really expensive, but minimum wage is really high. It's like $24 an hour. Work is super easy to find. You can make friends really easily and then make friends at your workplace and then go travel with them. Number six, travel Southeast Asia. Why not? This is something I wish I'd done if I'd planned my gap year a little a bit better I would have gone after Australia definitely to Bali because most people do that after Australia but I would have loved to have done the typical backpacker route like Vietnam Cambodia Laos Thailand it's super cheap when you're out there as well and a lot safer than people think especially as a solo traveler like you can do it number seven and if you've not heard about this I think it's revolutionary it is called Workaway. it's an app and a website and it allows you to travel a lot more cheaply kind of for free you can get free accommodation and sometimes free food um, in return for a few hours of work depending on where you choose and it's in literally every country for example i nearly did it in france i was looking at either going to a farm in a mountainous region and doing like four hours of farm work a day in return for free accommodation and free food there or living with a family in France and looking after their kids in the morning and the evening in return for free accommodation. That's how a lot of people travel for longer periods of time is by doing workaways and you can get like a really good authentic grasp of the culture by living with locals. Number eight, do an intensive language immersion. So I did do this. I went to France for two weeks um, in Montpellier. I'd recommend going for longer if I'm honest, but I did it with the school ILA. I lived with a French host family and I had French lessons all morning and then in the afternoon I was free to just go around the French city and improve my speaking. It was really cool to make friends who had a common goal because we'd all practice together. And maybe if you're a bit scared of backpacking and traveling around, it can be quite a good idea to stay maybe in one place and do that language immersion because you make friends easily from your lessons. Number nine is the EU Solidarity Corps. I can remember looking at this at the start of my gap year, but they have loads of opportunities within the EU. If you're British, Oh, who knows what's gonna happen with Brexit. Yeah, it's worth having a look at the website. Number 10, why don't you start a YouTube channel in your gap year? Why not? You never know where it could take you, but also it's just a really cool way to document your adventures and look back at them. You learn the new skills of editing, of branding, marketing yourself online, I suppose, and just talking to a camera. Number 11, start a small business, become an entrepreneur, why not? From starting a babysitting business to making your own product and selling it, 
why not? You've got time. Number 12, volunteer your time a lot. I volunteer for a charity sports able. Um, so I volunteer with disabled children and help teach them how to swim. Absolutely love it. I'm also heading to Uganda for three months to do a volunteer project with an actual reputable charity. It's not just me putting money into some large company which is perpetuating an orphanage system or anything like that. It's not like that. But yeah, that brings me on to number 13, which is do ICS if you're in the UK. That's the program I'm doing in Uganda. I'm working with the charity Restless Development and I'm so excited. You have to be interviewed for it, which I quite like, and you have to be DBS checked and you have to fundraise money for the charity. But it's largely UK government funded. The work is actually legit work with longevity. You get training on cultural awareness, uh, the white savior complex, loads of cool things which are important to know about for international volunteering. Number 14, volunteer abroad. If I had more time, I would 100% try and do some kind of conservation volunteer work. But yeah, do conservation work in the rainforest. Do turtle hatching projects. I do quickly want to say though, volunteerism can be a really dangerous industry. Please do your research. If you're paying three grand to volunteer for like a week, who is taking most of that money? It is not the beneficiaries, it's often that company. Also, if you're going for one or two weeks, really try and think how much of an impact is that actually gonna have? Like try and go for, kind of, I'd say minimum a month. Also try and avoid projects where you get attached to children or they become attached to you because there's this whole damaging cycle about the long lasting effects on children in developing countries who have all these international volunteers coming in like so on such a rapid turnover that there's kind of no stability in their lives. So try and avoid that. It's better to donate your money to those charities. Number 15, learn a language for fun. Just in your free time, hit up an app like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone. There are so many apps as well as French. I've been trying to improve improve my Dutch just for fun. Number 16 is FutureLearn or Coursera courses. A lot of them are like free university modules kind of. It's like a massive online open course, a MOOC. Why not learn about something new? Number 17, work out what to study, what course you want to do at university, what to do with your life if you haven't already worked that out. <laughs> Number 18, practice yoga or develop kind of a spiritual practice or just become more mindful. For me that's been something so nice about having more free time is my mental health health is so much better like it is probably at the best point it's been in my entire life because I take so much more time to ground myself which brings me on to number 19 which is focus on your mental health that is a large reason that a lot of people take gap years whatever focusing on your mental health means to you I think it's a very valid reason number 20 travel South America one of my friends is going to Chile on her own for like a month or something uh, she's learning Spanish over there and just backpacking it is true you have to be very careful and there are a lot of dangers but I also don't think you should be put off by scare stories because in reality you can be safe, especially if you go with like a tour group or organization. But yeah, do your research. 21, choose a country and go there. Save up, keep it in your mind and then just go there. Why not? For me, Slovenia was the most underrated country, one of the most underrated countries I've ever visited. It was great. I just had the map of Europe in front of me, saw it and I was like, yes, I'm gonna go there when I'm interrailing and I went and I loved it. 22, Camp America or Camp Canada? One of my close friends is doing Camp America this summer and I actually did apply for Camp Canada. It overlapped with ICS, so I kind of had to choose one or the other, but I would love to go do a camp one summer. It sounds so much fun. You can be a general camp counselor or have a specific skill at the camp, like run the rock climbing sessions or something like that. But socially, I think it's so much fun. You'll develop a lot of skills if you like kids great you've got a team of them. 23. Do another A-level or another qualification. It could be quite fun like proactively learning knowing that it's entirely your choice and not set for you by by an institution. You can also retake an A-level if you want better grades for your university prospects. 24. Learn to play an instrument. Why not? 25. Pick up a new dance skill. Go to the gym. Start pole dancing. I've never been to the gym as much as I have done recently and again I feel so much better. Like I don't just do it for like the physique. I just feel so much better when I exercise more. And nowadays I exercise, even if it's for five minutes, 
every single day. 26, get politically active and campaign for something you're passionate about. I've heard of people taking gap years to become activists. 27, listen to a lot of podcasts, watch a lot of documentaries, watch a lot of films if you want, even watch more Netflix. Podcasts especially for me have been great this year. You can also listen to a certain podcast that I've heard is quite good called The Wooden Spoon, which I may or may not be a part of. 28, visit your friends at university. Not only can you get advice and tips from them about university life, but it can be quite fun just to go visit them, meet their new friends too, go clubbing. 29, be a ski instructor for a season. This awesome guy I met in France, Yannick, he did two years, two gap years, where he was a ski instructor and he loved it. It just seems like so much fun. Your accommodation's like paid for, I think. You can save up some money, you make loads of friends. Number 30, be a surf instructor or be an instructor of anything. I nearly signed up to become a go ape instructor. <laughs> like I'm not really scared of heights, but I'm not that adventurous. Like I don't want to be running through trees the whole time, but I convinced myself that it would be a good idea. So like I really nearly considered it. 31, start a blog. I met an awesome English guy who took a year out of his life to go to China and learn kung fu for a year. He literally got to speak no English for like the whole year because it was just all Chinese people. But yeah, he started a blog and it was so cool reading his adventures. Number 32 is couch surf. Instead of hostels, which can be pricey depending on the country, if you're brave, you can do a thing called couch surf, which is where host families let you stay on their couch or in a spare bed, kind of for free. Obviously do your checks on the person before on the app, but I know a lot of people who have done it and it seems reputable. 33, train for a half marathon or a a marathon or like me I did a 10k which for me was quite a big thing challenge yourself number 34 I heard that there is this Danish high school thing that my Danish friend did where you pay for it but you just get to take any modules that you like so she did that for like half a year so it's like it's like an extension of doing school again but just there are no tests no exams just purely for the fun of learning and she loved it so if you're Danish I recommend. Number 35 is to just go out of your comfort zone in some way. It could be a very small way, like if you're not into traveling, you don't need to go traveling. Taking the train to a nearby city is challenging yourself if that scares you. Spending more time alone and getting to know yourself equally can be a way of going out of your comfort zone. Gap years are the best way to grow, to get to know yourself, to find yourself as choosy as it sounds. If you've been forced to take a gap year, See it as an opportunity, see it as something meant to be, see it as something where you can really grow and use this time as you want, how you want to. Definitely plan some things, get saving, get budgeting, and then go have the best year because I'm so sad mine is nearly over. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a like if you found it useful and have an amazing day. Bye.